Lots of people are using LLMs to summarize their content. For example, as a student, you might want to use an LLM to summarize a research paper. Or maybe if you're working in a company and people like to share interesting blog posts, you want to summarize those blog posts so you know what they're about. You can actually copy paste the contents of the research paper or the blog post directly into a chat assistant such as ChatGPT. But as you know, this is quite a tedious task. So you can also automate this by building your own web scraper. We'll be doing this using an open source library called Playwright. And also, we'll be using a new tool called Watson XAI Flows Engine to build a summarization flow. And this flow will help us to take contents from a web page and then summarize them using an LLM. The LLM we'll be using is IBM Granite Chat. And with Flows Engine, you can build much more. So let's head over to VS Code and start building our web scraper and then feed the content of the web scraper into what's an XAI Flows Engine using their JavaScript SDK. As mentioned, we'll be using what's an XAI Flows Engine, which is a tool to build AI applications using a declarative uh, flow language. And I'm going to show you how to install the CLI, which you can do by going to the documentation and download the CLI. After downloading it, it's a quick install using pip. Once you install the CLI, we can head over to VS Code where the real fun begins. In VS Code, I'm going to use the WXFlow CLI to initialize a new project. And I also want to set an endpoint name. And we're going to look back at the endpoint name later on. But I'm going to call it something like WXFlow Summarization. And this will generate a environment sample file and also a TOML file. First, let's look at the TOML file where our flows will be written. So flows are the most important concept when building something with what's an XAI flows engine. Because with flows, you can create steps and you can compose those steps into flows for things like rack, as you saw in a previous video. But today we will be using summarization. So for summarization, we basically need two things. We need to define our flow and then we need to define the steps that are required by this flow. We have two steps. Uh, one step is called template and prompt. And this will be to set our prompt template. And then the other step will be completion. And I'm gonna need to do a couple of more modifications here. For starters, the completion step takes an argument that's called parameters. This parameters argument is something we should pass explicitly as it isn't a required argument for a templated prompt. So we can do summarization dot parameters. But if you send a request with the flow summarization, you can also pass a parameters argument to it and it will be passed on to the completion step. The other argument we need to set is that of prompt template. So we want to pass a prompt template to this step because we want our prompt to explain what we're going to do. So we're going to do summarization. So our prompt should say something like, I want you to summarize this text into a very concise bit of text. And for this, I already created a prompt for us. Uh, the prompt says, system, you're a granite chat, an AI language model developed by IBM. You're cautious, you carefully follow instructions. You're helpful and harmless and you follow ethical guidelines and promote positive behavior. This is just to set some ground rules for the system. The thing that's user defined is this one. Create a concise summary of the document provided below, and then we're going to pass in a question variable as the document. So we're going to be leveraging the question argument that's already available in one of the steps to make our lives a bit easier. Uh, we can do more stuff here. We can say, instead of create a concise summary, create a dummy summary or create a explain it to me like your five-year-old summary. We can do multiple things here, but now I'm going to do a concise summary. So let me copy this prompt and bring it over to my TOML file uh, where you can just paste it in like this. If I save this, there's one other thing I should do. I should go into my environment sample file and clone it and rename it to dot environment and save it like this. We need to use a model. And as explained, we're going to use IBM Granite Chat. Uh, but of course, I also need to pass a host for the model or an API key. You can use What's an XAI Flows Engine with your own What's an X.AI account, 
but you can also use a shared account. And in order to activate that shared account, the only thing I need to do is save this in my environment variables. Once I save this, I'm going to check my TOML file one more time, and I'm going to run the command wxflows deploy. And this will deploy the flows that are available in my TOML file to a live endpoint. And we already set the endpoint name earlier on. So this will take a couple of seconds to complete. And then you can see I've got a nice little endpoint that looks like this. So now I would be able to send a request to this endpoint using HTTP or the SDK for JavaScript or Python. And I'm going to be using the JavaScript SDK in this case. I also created a small sample app because we need to set up a web scraper. We want to scrape a website and then pull down the contents of that website and summarize these. And for this, I'm going to use a blog post that I wrote. So let me open the app application here. As you can see, I already pre-filled my endpoint name and API key, and I'm gonna blur those just so uh, you won't see them after all. I'm doing a couple of things here. I'm importing Playwright, and I'm also importing WXFlows. So this is the JavaScript SDK for what's an XAI flows engine. And the first one, of course, is Playwright, an open source library to do web scraping and testing. I created a small function that will start a Chromium browser. So if you're using Chrome, this is what you need. It will then visit a URL. So a given URL in the browser that it's mocking through this Chromium setup. It's then going to find a locator and take the text inside the locator. And then finally, it will close the browser and return the results. I'm calling this function from uh, right here. So first I set up my connection to WXFlows by providing my endpoint and API key. And then finally, I'm going to call this function with two things. The first thing is the URL that I want to look at that, and then the locator. So let me open this URL and show you how to find the locator because you probably want to try this out with your own endpoint. So this is the blog post that I want to summarize. As you can see, it's quite a lot of text, so it would be good to get a concise version of it. In order to find this text, we need the locator. So this could be a CSS class name or an HTML element. So I'm going to use the inspect functionality right here to find the locator. And you can use this uh, button right here to get some more insights when you hover over the content. And by hovering here, I can get insights into the markup by looking somewhere here. I have the content body. I have the content data. So this is the content that I want. If I scroll down, you can see this is my uh, text for the blog post. So I need to take the URL and then I take the locator and I can head back to my web scraping script. So in my web scraper, I provided both the endpoint name and then the CSS locator. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to call the function model.flow. And this function will look at my summarization flow, which we just built. It's going to use the model IBM Granite Chat. And then it's going to set some parameters, such as the maximum new tokens and also the minimum new tokens. I don't want it to look at any stop sequences, so I just want the complete text to be uh, summarized. And also I need to pass my content. So the content comes from this web scraper and I'm going to pass it as the question. And then finally, I'm going to console log the results. So let me cd into the application. Uh, also clear my terminal a bit. And in here, I'm going to run uh, node index.js because I just want to execute whatever is in this file. Then it's going to scrape my website and finally uh, pass it through the summarization flow and it should print the summary of the text in my terminal. So I'm going to increase the size of my terminal a bit. And as you can see here, we have a summary. The document provides a tutorial on how to build a question answer application using JavaScript and IBM's What's an XAI Flows Engine. As you can see, it did a pretty good job in summarizing this blog post. Of course, I can go to IBM Developer, use any other blog post and summarize it. But more importantly, you probably want to try this out with your own website. So if you're writing a blog, you probably want to summarize it. That was it. That's how easy it is to build a web scraping tool using Playwright and then feeding the contents that you scraped into an LLM using What's an XAI Flows Engine. There's much more you can do, so make sure to head over to our webpage for which you can find the link in the description below. Also, and this is a new tool, we would like to get your feedback. So please let us know in the comments what you think, what you're building, 
or head over to Discord where you can find our community. All these links will be pasted in the description of the video, so make sure to have a look there. And of course, you can also find the GitHub code for the example I showed you. So that was it, and I hope to see you again next time.